typically sit this time of year, but headed into this weekend, it is going to be remaining unsettled, but those temperatures will be a little bit warmer Saturday before some cooler temperatures in the low 70s return on Sunday. Like I mentioned, Saturday will be the drier of the two weekend days, so that may be the better day to get any of those outdoor activities that you have planned done. But after that storm system moves out of here, those temperatures will cool down. That mugginess will move on out of here as well and will cool off right in time to kick off spring. But over the next seven days, that rainfall totals have backed off a little bit anywhere between now a really about an inch to two inches with that next system of rain moving into our area. That severe threat does look to stay off to our west in portions of central Alabama and down and towards a central Mississippi, but we'll continue to keep an eye on it and let you uh, know if there are any changes here over the coming days. But tomorrow, clear skies, temperatures in the mid to upper 40s waking up and really warming up in the afternoon to the low 80s and by the time we're coming home maybe in the upper 70s but overall a warm next couple of days kicking off spring we're looking at temperatures on the cooler side in the low to mid 60s when the sunshine looks to return uh, your St. Patrick's Day definitely going to be on the rainier side but mm. overall keep the umbrellas going Friday Saturday and Sunday because we are entering that unsettled weather pattern you know the St. Patty celebration is going to be eaten in uh drinking so they'll be inside <laughs> they'll be inside <laughs> thanks ariana are your teenagers absolutely tired of so much social media studies say yes they are and who's most sick and tired of it the boys or the girls we'll talk about that when we come back As parents are fretting over whether or not their teenagers are spending just too much time on their smartphones and social media, there's a survey out that brings some hope that some teens are actually putting limits on themselves and they think that the parents should do the same. Karen Kafa is in Washington with what parents need to know. In the midst of discussions of the potential harm of social media use to teens' mental health, a survey from the Pew Research Center found some teens dialing back their use. About 4 in 10 have cut back on their social media use, and about a third say that they've cut back on the time that they spend on their smartphone. Monica Anderson, director of Internet and Technology Research for Pew, said teen girls who other studies have indicated may face particular social media risks to mental health and body image are also more likely than teen boys to set limits. Girls are more likely than boys to say they spend too much time on either of these technologies, but they're also more likely than boys to say that they've taken steps to cut back on the time that they use on either social media or on their phone. The survey also found teens mindful of their parents' screen time and how it impacts family interactions. We asked teens to assess how often their parent was distracted when they're trying to have a conversation with them, and nearly half of teens said that this happens at least sometimes. Still, many parents said it's a priority to keep tabs on their teen screen time with both parents and teens equally likely to say they argue sometimes about when it's time for teens to put the phone down. In Washington, I'm Karen Kefa. Thanks, Karen. Here's more. People with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder are at an increased risk of premature death. But a large study out of Sweden suggests treating the disorder with medication can help reduce that overall mortality risk for the patients. Researchers identified about 150,000 people diagnosed with ADHD between 2007 and 18. Tracking deaths within two years of diagnosis, they found a 19% decrease in that two-year mortality rate for the people who got the medication. Treatment with medication reduced, they say, the risk of death from unnatural causes like uh, accidents, suicide, accidental drug overdoses, particularly in men. Experts say the report emphasizes the importance of a timely ADHD diagnosis. It's also an important reminder, they say, for health care providers to talk with patients who are deciding how they need to manage their ADHD. The study was published in the journal JAMA. And the United States' high maternal death rate makes it an outlier among developed nations. Each year, hundreds of American women die from complications related to pregnancy, to childbirth, and postpartum. 
and experts have expressed concern that the problem is getting worse. But was any of that true? A new study published yes, uh, today in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, it challenges the scale of the U.S. maternal health crisis. It is suggesting that you, if you rely on a pregnancy checkbox on medical records and death certificates, that may have led to an overestimation of maternal deaths. All 50 states have had the pregnancy checkbox on their death certificates since 2018 to indicate whether or not a deceased woman was pregnant at or around the time of death. Researchers involved in the new study say that checkbox does not tell you whether or not the pregnancy had anything at all to do with why the woman died. And therefore, maternal death rates in the United States may actually be a whole lot lower, a whole lot more stable than federal data has been telling us. Experts say clarifying the purpose of the checkbox in a more direct way could help improve the data of uh, data quality collection. Well, if you own a Roku device, stay tuned. You might have been hacked. We'll talk about that when we come back.